DECODEME study is a genome-wide association study. We're recruiting 20,000 people with a diagnosis of ME over the age of 16 in the UK. How are you recruiting them? So we've had a very complicated approach to this um, using a lot around social media. We used a marketing agency to be able to reach beyond our ME community that we're in contact with. We have engaged with health professionals, people like yourselves, who know people with ME and are able to signpost to the study. We've used the um, ME community themselves, people with lived experience, to help us reach out. We've had um, a press strategy so that we've had coverage in the news and that was particularly um, successful. I think one of the Guardian articles reached a large number of people because we included a link within that. So it's been quite, quite a big piece of work and that's the part of the study that the charity has been um, responsible for. So we have um, we have done very well with our recruitment numbers and I think the, the slide that may be shared in a moment will indicate the large number of sign-ups that we've had. We're um, around the 37,000 that have signed up and the process is you complete a questionnaire and it's a very detailed questionnaire all designed with people with lived experience. It takes a lot of energy for some um, and mm. it can be done over a period of time and we've particularly focused on those with more severe ME who are often bed bound and so we've had somebody that will yes. talk with them and elicit a few answers at a time and complete the questionnaire. And you've got and a spit kit. You get a spit kit so um, a proportion of people will be invited to provide a DNA sample so we post those out, spit into a tube, pop it back in its box and you send it um, to a centre where they extract the DNA. And so a proportion of people, is that mm -hmm. based on people who meet the criteria for ME properly or? So everybody has to have a diagnosis of ME. Mm -hmm. We have um, developed an algorithm that enables us um, to identify who meets very specific criteria, scientific criteria for this study. We're not sharing that detail in after, until after okay. the study has yeah. um, closed and so just if people aren't invited to provide DNA, it doesn't mean that they don't have ME just means they don't meet this very strict narrow criteria which we're using for this um, study so you're, you're giving some strong clues that this is a fairly rigorous study that you're doing and it meets all the requirements rigorous. of a proper piece of medical research uh, absolutely I mean it's been through all the peer review and everything that you would expect it to go through it's funded by the Medical Research Council and National Institute for Health Research so we've had to meet all of their standards mm. we have a fantastic scientific advisory board who holds hold us to account and of course the ME community um, hold us to account too and the, the people with lived experience that are involved in, in the study. Who's involved in this, this, this is a cheeky question, Who, who's involved in the study who might have an interest in skewing the results one way or another? Uh, nobody. Right. So, so we haven't got a pharma pharmaceutical body who's interested no, in flogging a drug or... No, so the University of Edinburgh yeah. um, are working with Action for ME and then a group of people with lived experience. We um, we have we are very rigorous in our results um, in the process and also when we produce results. The, we are not going to produce results until they've been tested and looked at by others. Um, the slides shown at the moment is um, the analysis that we've done on the first seven thousand questionnaire results and already David was talking about the subtypes we are starting to see that in the questionnaire results mm -hmm. we anticipate you know we're now over double that number when we look at the next batch that we will start to see more but we've um, you know identified that it's a five to one female bias um, within the results that we've looked at and interestingly being female older and more severely affected um, increases um, sorry being older female and ill for longer it increases the chance of having a greater severity of the illness. We know that around one in four people are so severely ill they're house bound and bed bound and actually for them exercise could be moved turning over in bed. Yeah. So they are very very severely affected. One of, one of the questions that does arise in my mind here is just looking at the, the validity of the results there. <laughs> is there a possibility that more women are reporting or getting a diagnosis than men? 
and that's we you know clearly that's something we see with other illnesses but actually the there are various studies and the these results rep, these results replicate um, what we see elsewhere that that isn't the case right. um, we're looking um, the team are looking at comparing different ethnic groups there's some really interesting findings that are emerging there that will be published um, fairly soon we've also looked at the UK biobank which is held by Edinburgh University there's over half a million around half a million people have contributed to that and so there's been some genetic analysis within um, that so we, we we can't see evidence from our mm. study and other studies that that is um, the case we, we do see more women um, coming forward mm.